Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Election day is right around the corner, so how do we protect ourselves from misinformation? And what if something goes wrong at the polls? And if it does, how do we report it? Well, I have all the information you need to know to get in the loop. Let's start with some information on how to identify phony info with a fact check from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. It's a pretty cool name, right? Fact. Bad actors may use fake personas and impersonate real accounts on social media in an effort to trick the public into believing misinformation. So, how do we figure out what's real and what's fake? Most platforms like Facebook and Twitter provide some sort of indication of pages verified by them, like a blue or a gray check mark. If an account claims to be some sort of prominent figure or organization and isn't verified, they could be an imposter. Some things to ask yourself. Is the account brand new? Do they make their own content or are they just sharing things? Do they have a profile description that makes sense and doesn't match what they're posting? Do they have a real profile picture? We should all really start vetting the posts that we share. And emails can be spoofed too. These guys will send an email pretending to be from a specific domain and in an attempt to harvest personal data, spread malware, or push out false information. They forge sender addresses or set up fake domains that are just a little off from what the real one is. Look out for weird emails and if you have doubts, go to the organization's official website to verify and never provide personal information or download files from suspicious email accounts. Just don't do it. And if you have an election related question, it's always best to go to a trusted source like of course your local election officials. They are super nice, I promise. Now let's skip ahead a little bit. Let's say you are at the polls, ready to cast your vote, and someone starts bothering you in person. How do you know when that crosses a line? You as a voter are protected from being intimidated when you go to the polls by both federal and state laws. So here are some examples of voter intimidation. Physically blocking polling places, using threatening language in or near a polling place, yelling at people or calling people names while they are in line to vote, disrupting or interrogating voters, looking over people's shoulders while they're voting, aggressively questioning voters about their citizenship, criminal record, or other qualifications to vote, falsely representing oneself as an elections official, displaying false or misleading signs about voter fraud and related criminal penalties, other forms of harassment, particularly harassment targeting non-English speakers or voters of color, and spreading false information about voter requirements. If you or someone else is being threatened at the polls, reach out to a poll worker on site. Be clear about what you saw. Talk to an election supervisor or reach out to your board of elections to make a report. And then what happens after the election? One thing I want to make clear, election at night results are not official results. They never have been. This is nothing new. However, it has become a tradition in the U.S. to hear the names of the projected winners of each race on election night. But legal experts have pretty much said, don't hold your breath this year. And even if we do get the projected results on November 3rd, unless there's a landslide victory, the results probably won't be finalized for a few days or even weeks. And that's because of all of the mail-in and absentee ballots coming in this year, which are likely going to cause some delays. And a lot of those delays will come from battleground states where they there are different rules about when those votes can be counted. In Florida, ballots can be counted as early as 22 days before the election, but they are in the minority. States like Michigan, Iowa, and Pennsylvania have laws that prevent mail-in ballots from being counted until polls are closed. This could result in days of counting for election officials and volunteers in key states that could make a difference in a close race. And even if all goes well in terms of voting, more delays could come up in the courtroom. According to the Associated Press, there are more than 260 lawsuits linked to this election. But while it might be a drawn out process this year, our voices will be heard and we will keep you informed every step of the way. Plus, you can tune in right here on November 3rd for live election updates. I will be hopping on YouTube Live throughout the night to keep you updated on the latest information. Just be nice to me. And if at any point in this process you see something weird or off, report it. Here are some important numbers and emails on your screen, but I will have that information readily available for you in the description of this video. And we want to know about that too. WTL11 is embarking on a new partnership with ProPublica, a nonprofit investigative news organization to track voting issues and election integrity. So again, if you experience or witness any issues, reach out to us through text. SMS, WhatsApp, or Facebook Messenger. That is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our channel. You can get those live election updates, and I don't know, maybe share it with a friend. 
I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.